Okay, let's, uh, this is section 6.2, sum and difference formulas, and there's a little note that says remove problems uh, 65 and 81 from the homework list, so uh, we're going to skip those if they're on there. All right, uh, so let's look at first the sum and uh, difference formulas for sine and co uh, cosine, and we'll start by looking at the cosine of u minus v, okay? Cosine of u minus v. So uh, let's take a look at uh, where would the angle u v. So we, we consider some angle u, uh, and the uh, uh, in standard position. So that means it starts off at uh, on the positive x axis, and then it, you rotate uh, to some point on the unit circle, right? Uh, so the terminal ray uh, intersects the point on the unit circle at the point cosine u sine u. Uh, and if we take V then to be some smaller angle in this case, it doesn't have to be, but it could be, let's say. Uh, and it wouldn't matter if it wasn't. Uh, so its terminal side uh, intersects the unit circle at the, uh, at the point cosine V sine V, right? Because it's angle V. All right. Uh, and so the difference between the two angles, we're going to call it theta. So we're going to consider two uh, distances. First, the distance between the two points where... Uh, where the, the terminal side uh, intersects the, uh, the unit circle for those two points. So that's from cosine u sine u to cosine v sine v. The distance would be the quantity, uh, the square root of the quantity cosine u cosine v minus cosine v quantity squared uh, plus uh, the quantity sine u minus sine v quantity squared. And if you take the square root of all of that, that would be the distance between those two points. Now, I am now going to take that angle theta, which is the difference between u and v, and I'm going to uh, superimpose it so that one of those, uh, one of its sides is along the positive x-axis. Yeah. So now the terminal side of theta intersects the unit circle as cosine theta sine theta. And so if I find the distance between that point cosine theta sine theta and the point one zero, that'll be the same distance as from uh, cosine u sine u to cosine v sine v, okay? So again, I just use the distance formula, so that would be the square root of uh, quantity cosine u theta minus one quantity squared uh, plus sine theta minus zero quantity squared. Remember sine theta minus zero will just be sine theta. All right, and if I square both sides and, uh, um, and then solve for cosine of theta, yeah? And I'll let you read the notes for that on your own, okay? So I end up with cosine theta equals cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. And remember then theta again was just the angle u minus v. So we have cosine of u minus v equals cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. And we can use that as a formula, yeah, for the difference of any two angles, okay? All right, now... Uh, so we, we, then, we have then uh, cosine of u minus v is equal to cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. To find a formula for the cosine of u plus v, we can think of uh, u plus v as u minus negative v. And just use the formula that we have right now for a cosine of u minus v. So cosine of u minus negative v will be cosine u cosine negative v plus sine u sine negative v. If you remember, cosine is even, so uh, cosine of negative v is just cosine v. And uh, sine is odd, so we can take the negative that's in the argument, sine of negative v, and move it out. And so we end up with uh, the expression uh, si cosine of u plus v is cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. And again, we can use that as a formula for when we want to find the cosine of the sum of two angles. Okay? All right. If we look, if we consider the sine, we can think of the cofunction. Uh, identities. I don't know if you remember those. And th those told us that um, sine x is cosine of pi over 2 minus x. Okay? Uh, or we can think of it as sine a equals cosine of 90 degrees minus a, but we're going to work with really the x. So sine x is cosine of pi over 2 minus x. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we can think of uh, sine of u plus v as cosine of pi over 2 minus u plus v, right? Notice I'm just replacing x with u plus v. All right, so that'll be on the second page. So we have then sine of u plus v is cosine of pi over 2 minus the quantity u plus v, and I'm going to distribute that minus. So I have equals the cosine of uh, pi over 2 minus u minus v, and then I'm going to group the first two terms. So it'll be cosine of the, uh, uh, the quantity pi over 2 minus u minus v. 
Okay, now I have a, a formula for that, right? It's a minus V, so it's cosine of the first, pi over 2 minus U, cosine of the second, which is V, cosine V, plus sine of the first, which is pi over 2 minus U, times sine of the second, which is sine of V. Now, the cofunction identities, we just saw one, cosine of pi over 2 minus U is just sine of U, yeah, and sine pi over 2 minus uh, u is just cosine of u. So this ends up saying uh, sine of u plus v is sine of u, cosine of v plus cosine of u sine v. Okay, very similar to the other one, right? And then we can apply uh, this, uh, what we know, which we know the sine of u plus v to, si to find sine of u minus v. To find sine of u minus v, we rewrite it as sine of u plus negative v. That'll be sine u cosine negative v plus cosine u sine negative v. And then again, remember, cosine is even and sine is odd, so this will equal sine u cosine v minus cosine u sine v. Okay? All right. Uh, <clears throat> we'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, but let's use these formulas that we have to do some examples. So our first example says, uh, find the exact value of the given expression for all our examples. So number one, the expression is cosine 320 uh, 320 degrees times cosine of 260 degrees plus sine of 320 degrees sine of 260 degrees. That's the cosine of u minus v and we have to identify the u and the v and of course that's easy because the first is cosine u and the second is cosine v. So my u and v are 320 degrees and 260 degrees. So this will equal, this whole expression will be the cosine of uh, 320 minus 260 degrees, which is the cosine of 60 degrees, and the cosine of 60 degrees is, that is correct, one half. All right, let's try number two, the cosine of 15 degrees. We'll start number two. Uh, number three, uh, we'll leave for class all of it, uh, and number four, we'll uh, do a little part of it, okay, and, and then leave the rest for class. So, so number two asks us to find the cosine of 15 degrees, an exact number. That means don't use the calculator. All right, so uh, what two angles that I know of can I write somewhere different that uh, either adds or subtracts to 15 degrees? Well, I think cosine of 15 I can think of as cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. They're not the only ones, but those are two that work. All right, uh, that will equal, remember this is u minus v, so it's cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. All right, so this will be cosine 45 degrees, cosine 30 degrees, plus sine 45 degrees, sine 30 degrees. Okay? And then I just had to find each of those and work them out. I'll leave it there. We'll finish it in class. All right, let's try number four. We'll start it off again, uh, this one also, and, and we'll leave the rest for class. All right, cosine alpha plus beta. Uh, we need to find the exact uh, value for cosine alpha plus beta. Given that sine of alpha is 5 thirteenths, cosine of beta is 5 sixths, A is in quadrant 2, I'm sorry, alpha is in quadrant 2 and beta is in quadrant 4. Okay, so let's write the expression first for cosine alpha plus beta. So cosine alpha of, of the quantity alpha plus beta will be cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta. So notice we have sine of alpha and cosine of beta, but we need cosine of alpha and sine of beta. And so we can find those. So for, um, for alpha, remember uh, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we can say uh, cosine squared alpha is 1 minus sine squared alpha. Right, I can write it that way. Okay, so cosine squared alpha will be 1 minus, uh, and the sine of alpha is 513, so it'll be 25 over 169. All right, uh, I can think of the 1 as 169 over 169, so cosine squared alpha is 144 over 169, right, because I subtract the 25 over 169 from the 169 over 169. And so my cosine of... Uh, uh, alpha will be plus or minus 12 thirteenths. Okay, so I just need to figure out, is it plus or minus? Well, alpha is in quadrant 2, and in quadrant 2, cosine is negative, so cosine alpha is negative 12 thirteenths. Okay, and similarly, you will find, what's the other missing part? Sine of beta, okay? Plug them in there and finish it off, and we'll finish that off in class also.
Okay. All right. Let's continue with part two, applying sum and difference to tangent. So the tangent of u plus or minus v will be sine of u plus or minus v over cosine of u plus or minus v. On top, sine of u plus or minus v is sine u cosine v plus or minus cosine u sine v, right? And the cosine of u plus or minus v will be cosine u cosine v minus or plus, notice the sine switch, sine u sine v. All right, if we multiply top and bottom by 1 over cosine u cosine v, we get uh, that all of that is equal to tangent u plus or minus tangent v over 1 minus uh, or plus tangent u times tangent v. Okay, and there's an example that says find the exact value of tangent 7 pi over 12s. Uh, I'll leave that to you. We'll finish it in class to figure out how you're going to break up that 7 pi over 12 into a u plus v or a u minus v. All right, let's do one other one. I think we have a little bit of time. It says uh, verify that cosine of pi over 2 minus x equals sine x. So I'll start with the left hand side. It equals cosine of pi over 2 minus x. That'll be cosine pi over 2 cosine x plus sine pi over 2 sine x. That's cosine of pi over 2 is 0 times cosine x plus 1 times sine x. That equals sine x which is the right hand side. Okay, and we'll leave uh, examples two and three uh, for class. Okay, that'll be uh, section six two, and then we'll have another video for section six three.